Hey! What's going on? What's going on, guys? Whoa! Thank you. CG here with Canadian Gamer. Can't even talk. Canadian Gamer here. CG. <laughs> so, today, you know, it's been a while since I put out a video. Today, there's a few things I want to talk about. This is going to be a, a very loose, raw video. And uh, today's beer of the day, Old Milwaukee Ice. <laughs> Extra strong. We're not going to pour this in a glass because, let's be honest, people that drink Old Milwaukee, if they don't pour it in a glass and drink it straight from the can. So, I'm sweating like a pig in church right now. I don't have the ceiling fan on because uh, if I put it on, you can actually hear it in the video. I don't know if you guys have noticed that before. So, <laughs> we're rolling with this. So, I got a few topics to talk about here. And then at the end of the video, uh, we're going to do a hot pepper challenge. Uh, CG is going to try to eat this jalapeno pepper all in one bite. Well, I'll take a few bites, but... And if you guys enjoy the pepper challenge, maybe we can continue it. You guys can re make requests. Uh, I like spicy foods. I like hot peppers and all that good stuff. So it should be fun, should be entertaining. So yeah, I've been working like a dog, working crazy, crazy hours. I've been wanting to put out a video even last night, but uh, I've been working long hours. So it is what it is. So today I'm putting this video out. And we're already at the two minute mark. Uh, this video is gonna roll. I don't know how long this is gonna be. I'm gonna take my time. Oh, excuse me. You know, it's not about that sweet, sweet ad revenue with me. Uh, obviously, I, I can't even collect ad revenue. Which is why I'm drinking Old Milwaukee and not Corona. Can't afford the premium stuff. <laughs> Alcohol has gone up in price here in Ontario. Presumably because of uh, the financial impact that COVID-19 has had. A lot of stuff is going up in price, so it's just crazy. So, I think the first thing I'm going to talk about here, um, a little bit of a mini rant, maybe not a rant, but a conversation piece. So, I talked about this with somebody in my comment section recently, but it's basically got to do with, I know it's an odd topic, video game cases. The reason why I bring that up, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can definitely relate, have you not noticed the cases that the games come in have gotten basically cheaper in, in build quality over time? So, just want to short, sh short. Just want to share a little story with you. Um, back in the late '80s, early '90s, I like everybody else, I had an NES, and uh, believe it or not, you could actually get clamshell cases for the NES even before the Genesis, or around the same time, I guess. And uh, the NES had these. Uh, basically translucent transparent cases there were neon colors because neon was the thing back then i could specifically remember you could get like green purple pink and it would say nintendo right on the case they were actually really nice and uh, obviously the genesis had the clamshell cases as well and then the super nes went with the cardboard boxes so there was already a dip in quality as far as the cases were concerned but then around the sixth generation of gaming we had you know, the really nice, uh, I should say, yeah, sixth, yeah, sixth generation. Yeah, the fifth was the jewel cases. Those were garbage. Uh, Sega Saturn, PS1. The sixth generation, we had really decent cases here. I just want to show this as an example. Uh, Max Payne. The original Xbox has fantastic cases. I don't have any that have any, as far as I'm aware, any damage or any cracks or anything. Really sturdy, really solid plastic really industrial and then we get to the seventh generation let's use gun as an example these cases are absolute trash <laughs> i've had so many break on me just the flimsiest biodegradable cases that money could buy just super cheap and flimsy and it's really unfortunate because these cases like i said were really sturdy ps2 as well and i think even the gamecube but yeah seventh generation is just garbage and then the reason why I bring that up is because the eighth and the current generation, we have these cases. These are f***ing trash. <laughs> these are garbage. Fuck, you could throw these in your compost. These are absolute trash. So it's like, you know, everybody's all about, you know, preserving physical media and, and collecting. 
I don't know, man. I mean, the disc is one thing, and this is the Shenmue HD collection. The disc is one thing, but I mean, the f***ing cases are throwaway. They're absolute trash. So, it'd be cool if a third-party company came out with some cases that were really sturdy. Or maybe a line of steelbooks where you could put in a special request and, and get a steelbook for any type of game that you have. Because, yeah, these these cases are trash, and I imagine the, the ninth gen will be the same. And even the uh, Nintendo Wii and the Wii U, the cases aren't that great as well. So that was my little rant. How do you guys feel about video game cases? Have you noticed a steady decline? Um, buddy that I was talking to, he, he mentioned that obviously the, the big three, you know, they're trying to, I guess, be more environmentally friendly is what he was saying. And that's why these cases are basically paper thin, you know. You could hang this on your clothesline outside, it would probably blow away. <laughs> so it's absolute trash. So the next thing I want to talk about, like I said, I'm sweating like a pig in church here. How are we doing for time? Six minutes? Yeah, we'll keep going. Let me take a sip of my beer here. So the next thing I want to talk about here, it's, it's the ongoing, the raging war of the SNES versus the Sega Genesis. This has been an a hot debate and argument for centuries, for years, decades, <laughs> which console is better. And honestly, I have to apologize because for the longest time, I've always been adamant that the SNES was the more superior console. You know, when you look at the library of games, obviously the Super NES has a, <laughs> a beast of a lineup, especially around 1994-95, you know, when we started to get Super Metroid, Donkey Kong Country, Chrono Trigger, a lot of those sick RPGs. <laughs> the Super NES was just hit after hit after hit. But, you know, I have to say, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at this with an open mind, both consoles have their faults and both consoles have their redeeming qualities. I don't think either console is better than one or, one or the other. I think they, they both have significant disadvantages and advantages. So I think that's where I, I wanna sit with that. I don't think the Super NES is necessarily the better, better console. I think the Genesis, and again, this is just briefly talking about this topic because we could go on for an hour about this. And believe me, if you enjoy it, I, I can do a whole nother video on this, but the Genesis is definitely for more of the hardcore, I would say, adult gamer. A lot of the games are very visceral, very violent. Uh, not not for your, your child to play whereas the Super NES had a lot more kid-friendly games let's be honest uh, I'd say the Super NES definitely has the better graphics the better color palette but the Genesis uh, it t tends to have believe it or not better resolution in a lot of its games and a lot of the games just ran better on the Genesis as well especially a lot of the uh, the multi plats that were on those two consoles uh, there was a channel, I can't remember the name of the channel off the top of my head, but it's on YouTube and it's a really awesome channel. I'll put a link uh, in the pinned comment and he'll take the same game and uh, from both consoles and he'll run them at the same time so you can see the differences. And to be honest with you, a lot of times the Genesis had the superior version of the game. Like Earthworm Jim as an example, it crazy as it sounds the graphics are almost I would say better on the Genesis you can even see the uh, the first level the graphics are, are, are darker on the Genesis the background is different even the sound is different the sound is better on the Genesis believe it or not even the, the Genesis sound chip a lot of times if it could be exploited or exploited in a way uh, that the programmers could you know definitely get the most out of it a lot of times the the audio on the Genesis it ain't bad it ain't no slouch and uh, another game would be flashback you can see the cutscenes in the Genesis is just like silky smooth and on the Super NES it's just like like fucking two frames a second and uh, you know even uh, out of this world one of my probably my most favorite game of all time uh, it runs fantastic on the Genesis because I played both versions and the frame rate is really slow on the Super NES, so yeah, I, I wouldn't say this. The Genesis is better than the Super NES, or vice versa. I think they both have redeeming qualities, and uh, but I would say a lot of times the the multi plats they're better on the Genesis. I'm going to leave it at that. Even even Aladdin, 
The game's actually totally different on the Genesis than it is on the Super NES, made by different developers. It's just really interesting to see the multi-plat side by side. It's really eye-opening. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. But you know, growing up, uh, I always had the Super NES as a child. But now that I'm an adult and I'm collecting for the Genesis, I don't, I don't think that's such a bad thing. I think now the, the Genesis resonates a lot more with me than the, uh, the Super NES. And from a price perspective, it's almost like Tops and Opeachy. Opeachy is the more expensive cards we would collect back in the day, and Tops was a cheaper brand. Uh, the Genesis is looked at like the Tops brand, and the Super NES is kind of like Opeachy, if that makes sense. But yeah, it's like talking about the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. It's crazy. <laughs> so that's it. I'll leave it at that. And again, if you guys want me to, to talk about that a little bit more, I really don't mind. I think it's a really interesting topic. To go back and, uh, and talk about those two consoles. It's hot. So, I guess we're right about at the 11 minute mark. I'll leave it at this. I've been playing Halo 4 on the Xbox 360 the last couple of nights, and I'm having a blast with it. Uh, I am playing it on easy, but man, it's still hard, it still kicks your ass. It's definitely harder than Halo 5. Halo 5, you can play that on easy. And you can't even die even if you want to try, <laughs> even if you want to die, excuse me. But Halo 4, you could be running along on easy and it seems really easy and then all of a sudden a guy comes by and just kills you. But like you get to respawn kind of close to where you died. So yeah, I really enjoy it a lot. Halo 4, fantastic. I think Halo 6 looks good as well, or Infinite. I think people are being a little too harsh on that game. Uh, we haven't even played it yet, we're just seeing what I assume is close to a finished product and uh, when that game comes out on the Xbox one I'll probably pick that up as well so yeah so without further ado uh, let's get it on with the show let's do this hot pepper challenge I might fail miserably but uh, I don't know maybe I'll keep my sunglasses off for this so if my eyes water you guys can see I'm really eating it so all right let's go Not bad. <coughs> Whoa. Can really see the seeds. No, this ain't so bad. Oh. That heartburn tonight. Oh! Fuck me! Oh! Starting to get a hiccup! There we go! So that's the hot pepper challenge. This is CG. That's going to do it for this video. You guys have a good night. Take care.